Hi, welcome to this video. My name is Doug Milford from Lambda Valley. Uh, I want to um, uh, recognize the YouTube subscribers I have from Rust. Thank you for uh, watching this video. This is going to be a real life demonstration of what is possible with Rust. Uh, on the same time, I'm making it so that you can also do TypeScript development on top of Rust. So Rust will be doing the calculations, uh, but the ergonomic feel of TypeScript will be what most developers will be dealing with. Uh, so I want to introduce who's on the call right now. Uh, I think Kobe is still muted, but we'll talk to the others. Uh, the first is uh, Suzanne Schwartz. Uh, Suzanne is the first and last person I talk to when, it, when I, uh, I'm doing the design of any type of application or control. So Suzanne, welcome. Thank you for joining. Hello. Uh, next up is Keith Milford. Keith is uh, literally my twin brother, uh, not figuratively, literally. And uh, he's uh, the uh, head of SAP at his company, and uh, he helps me out anytime I have uh, any type of conceptual problems. He's the first one I call. And uh, so, Keith, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. And Kobe Gross uh, is also on the line. I, I think his uh, uh, microphone is muted at the moment. Uh, but he is the best React developer I've ever seen. He works in the Hollywood industry. He's the first person I call when I have a React question. And so, Kobe, uh, even though you're muted, thanks for thanks for joining, and uh, thank all of uh, thank all of you for uh, joining as well. The the Rust uh, Rust subscribers, I, I wanted to throw out something some content towards you. Uh, I know it's been a while, but uh, let's let's at least see if we can make it worth worth your while. Okay, so what you're currently seeing on the screen is a Skunk Works project I'm doing to enhance web development. Uh, I have, I have uh, been long frustrated with HTML and CSS and the constraints that go with it and the conflicting styles that go with it as well. And so what this is, is an attempt by me to break free of that. So uh, this is gonna be much more than HTML, much more than CSS. It allows you as the developer to create much more immersive websites. Uh, uh, it does use Rust as the calculation underneath the hood. And uh, it, I'm able to capture a lot of performance, speed, and memory management capabilities because of that. And so for your Rust developers, even though today is going to be about TypeScript and how you would use this project in uh, TypeScript, know that Rust is really in the background. Um, so why am I uh, so against HTML and CSS and everything like that? Well, first of all, it's built for your grandfather's uh, websites. We need something that's better, something that's going to be um, perhaps uh, uh, in line with augmented reality and, and any other development in the future. Oh, Kobe is coming back in. So um, one example is 3D. So uh, HTML and CSS really are a two-dimensional type of thing. And I wanted to break out of that mold. Another thing is any type of graphics that is going to go beyond what I, let's say as a framework developer, initially envision. I want to make it so it's uh, uh, extendable by you, not just anything that I dream up and bake it in. You're going to be able to have the ability to extend it to fit your graphical needs. So that's that's kind of uh, the rundown. So what we're looking at here is just, it, it's nothing special, but it's just a, a three page website. And uh, what you're seeing here for the sparkles is actually some native control that I enhanced to, to do this effect. And it's just supposed to be something to display something different than what HTML and CSS can achieve. And so you can take any image and it'll make it sparkle on the dark parts. If you notice on the light parts, it kind of leaves, uh, leaves um, uh, nice and clean. And so uh, not to say you would ever use this per se, it's just an example, something that you can do that you couldn't do with the old stuff. So if we go to uh, other pages, this one's left blank on purpose. It's just an about page. But for those of you who watch my Rust 3D graphics in the browser, you probably recognize this uh, sine wave. Uh, so this is another example where I've created a 
uh, control that'll work just like any other native div, if you will. And it is, it's just uh, in a, another example where 3D or any type of graphics is kind of built into this framework. And that's what I'm kind of trying to achieve. Break out of the 2D mold, break out of the uh, conflicting CSS styles, break out of the cross browser hell that is web development today. So part of this is uh, any, anytime you de define stuff, it'll work the same on Safari or Chrome or Firefox or whatever. The point is your definitions are the definitions. Okay, so one of the things I did to make this uh, a little more developer friendly is since I'm going away from HTML and CSS, I wanted to give you guys debug capabilities. So when I press Control D, a debug panel will pop up on the right hand side. So this is very similar to what you might see in Chrome. So if you, this is kind of a uh, virtual tree, if you will. And if you click on one of these guys, it'll tell you some information. So first of all, it, on, over here, it'll kind of hover uh, over what the div looks like to, to the calculation engine. On the bottom side here, it'll give you some DSS information. Uh, DSS, real quickly, just stands for my CSS version. So instead of cascading style sheets, it's Doug's style sheets. And so you have your definitions and then the calculations definitions, which is just combining it with the default. So, and below that, we have a little box that kind of gives you exact information for martyr, uh, margin, border, padding, and the exact div definitions. So in here, we have a border of one going around, has a padding of 10. You can see that with the green right here. And then that gives you the exact, exact uh, dimensions of the gray area. So in the sparkle, the sparkle is the same type of thing. It's a dip. Uh, it's just a specialized dip that I've created. Uh, it only has a margin of 10 up top, but everything else is just standard. So uh, uh, it's meant to work in a composable way with everything else. So you can create your own controls. And in this case, I created something that sparkles on any image. Uh, I'm gonna change the image just so you can see the effect. So in the components area, I'm on my main menu. Uh, instead of my Lambda Valley banner, I'm gonna change it to a Rust logo, just so that we can see an example of what's going on. And so you see this, this is the same thing, but it's just a simple uh, effect that's kind of built into the framework. And if I open it up, you'll, you know, it gives you the same type of information uh, as before, and it'll highlight, you know, the sparkle on the dark part, but leave the white part uh, alone. So, uh, so far, um, I know I've just kind of uh, just racing ahead here. Are there any questions so far? Seeing saying div, but yep. my understanding was that this is not using HTML, right? That is correct. Uh, uh, thank you for that question. So when I say div, uh, the only reason I I'm saying div is because I want to preserve the concept of a div from uh, developers in the web world. But when I when I say div, I'm really meaning what I define as a div. It's not an HTML node. So it's just trying to reuse a lexicon that the community already uses. And so I could have called it anything else. Uh, I could have called it a pop or whatever whatever it is. But uh, uh, thanks for the question. So the Sparkle, would, when I say it's a div, it's not an HTML div. It's a, it's a Lambda Valley div, if you will. And this div is the same thing. It's not a div that you know in HTML. It's a Lambda Valley div. Does that make sense? Yeah, but, the, but the intent is it, it's supposed to function like that. It just gives you extra ability. Right? Yeah, yeah. Give you extra functionality, break you out of that mold. Okay? Okay. Okay. So, you know, this debug panel comes in handy as you're poking around, um, and, and we'll use it quite a bit during this uh, demonstration. So, um, let's go ahead and... And, Kobe, are, are you able to use your microphone yet? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Hey, great. Fantastic. Hey, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Okay, so what I want to do is a little development exercise. 
Right now we have three different pages. I want to create a fourth page so you get the flow of what's going on. And uh, so I'm going to create what's called a landing page. It's just the first page. And uh, let's go to the code. And I'll close this up here. Hello. Okay. So uh, on any application, you're going to need to know uh, some type of router. Route to certain page based on what the user has selected. So this is really just a simple enumeration. So I'm just going to create a new page as a uh, um, landing page. And I'll do an alphabetical order. OK, so this is just going to create a little placeholder so it knows what to point to uh, as an enumeration. Okay. Are you following like React? Um, yeah, good, great question. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of React. And uh, I'm trying to preserve a lot of what the concepts that it has so that um, uh, any React developer can come in and say, yeah, that looks uh, familiar enough that they can be immediately functional. And Kobe's going to be able to, you know, he's, he's a hardcore React developer. He's going to be able to see the similarities. And there are small differences, but uh, it's going to be um, pretty obvious to him uh, as we go along. But um, yeah, Kobe, if you want to, uh, anytime you want to pop in and make a comment or a question or something could be better, I'm, I, I want, want you to feel free to do that. So, okay, great. Uh, and so... Uh, on the index uh, type, uh, TypeScript page, uh, the way it knows how to go to a route is it has this change route function. So you can tell it to change a route on the fly. And that's how it works. When I click the contact us button, it's actually coming in here and saying, hey, I'm going to change it to the contact us. Well, we're getting a compile error now because uh, what I'm doing is uh, it, it's, it's an exhaustive check, meaning it has to to uh, fulfill every single one of the enumerations. And we just added one. We added a landing page. So we need to make sure we have a landing page inside of here. So let's do that. Okay, landing page. Did I spell it wrong? All right, and so it's going to be just following the pattern here. So I'm going to call an update page func and call the landing page, which we haven't created yet, but we're going to. So all this is going to do is give us a div tree function. And uh, we haven't created it. Let's go ahead and create it now. So all the other places, like the contact us, are located in the component area. So we have contact us page. We have an about page, and they our function to return a div. So let's do the same for the landing page. And I'm just going to return back something very simple. And here, there's no angle brackets like you would see with HTML or React. It's just straight uh, uh, syntax with div. Hold on here. Let me import some stuff here. So the capital div is I'm a type definition. So that's an interface. This is a function that kind of uh, allows you to bring back some definitions. So let's do this as text. So very similar to React when you have a render or something like that. All this is doing is saying, I'm going to return back some type of tree. So this is just some type of tree I'm returning back. And on the index, now that I've created that function, it should recognize it right there. And sure enough. So now we've hooked that up to our router. And so uh, when I initialize my application, I'm actually going to say I'm going to start on the landing page. So as you see here, it says right off the bat, I'm on the landing page. So we've created our page. We've hooked it up to the router. And uh, if it's missing a lot of the other stuff, we'll get, get to that. 
but it's kind of a basic, like how would you initialize a, a page? Any questions so far? No? Nope. Okay, okay. I, I, I always have a hard time knowing if I'm going too fast or too slow. So if I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. If I'm going too slow, tell me to speed it up. So, okay. So on the other pages, if I go back to the, uh, let's do, do the contact us page. On the other pages, I have a uh, header up here with multiple page links. So we want to be able to use that as well. So that's actually a composite control that's up in the components controls area. I've got a nav header. And how that looks is very similar to how you might see a page. It's just got some a function with some inputs, and specifically it wants to know what route you're on and also a function to be able to pop to a different route. And it's got a container div and it's children, it has three children. And so on here, that looks like one, two, three. So we wanna add a fourth one. So I'm gonna do that uh, by hand. Uh, so if I do a div, and you don't need to give it an ID. In the debug panel, it's nice to have an ID so you know what you're looking at. Lab. Which link? Will the ID affect how rendering works as it does in typical React? No. Uh, so ID in, in uh, most web, in, in web pages uh, that are currently done, often that's related to style. And that's not the case here. Uh, styling has nothing to do with the ID. Styling has nothing to do with, uh, all, it, all it's meant to do is give you an identifier. So in the debug panel, you can see what, what it is. And as well, um, I'm considering migrating state from render to render based on the ID. I haven't really fleshed out if I truly want to do that or not, but I'm considering it. So that's a good question though. So on the nav link, I'm going to set my DSS, which is uh, the style. And nav link is a style that I've set in my uh, style sheet. And we'll go to there in a second. But that's just a function that's asking for, is my route uh, the same as the page? Okay. And it's going to display landing page as this text. And then on mouse down, I want to pop over to that page. X, Y. Okay. Did that make sense? Yeah, perfect okay. Sense. Perfect sense. Okay, great. So all I've done is extended this composite control to have another link on it, landing page, sure enough. So when I click on it, it says I'm on the landing page, but you see that that header goes away. Well, the reason being is the landing page never incorporated the header. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, I'm going to actually do this. We're going to... Is the syntax, does the syntax kind of make sense to you? It, for a web developer, it should feel somewhat similar to HTML, but not, you know, not so different. So we got... Um, it's very familiar. Uh, it comes from React, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. What did I call it here? In the main menu page, I add git cur route. I'm going to just steal these guys. Boom. And, uh, you know, the they've gotten pretty good at, at recognizing what you really want to import. So I was able to import those two guys into the file pretty easily here without a lot of keystrokes or anything like that. And so that alone should give a, um, uh, the, our, our navigation to the landing page. Sure enough. Now, I don't have anything else in there, but let's put, put another piece of text in there. And 
And I'm going to, so here's the text over here. So you'll, you, you can see it's kind of a little strange. The howdy went up in the uh, entire top left corner. And that's where explicit definitions come into play. I'm actually going to change the default to landing page so it doesn't keep popping us back to the contact us page. Okay. Okay, so I'm actually I'm gonna actually add another one just so that we can have something to play with. Okay, so this is gonna be two texts uh, on on there, but you'll notice that they're kind of right on top of each other, and so the default is uh, um, everything just is based on the parent's location, but we can change that. We can say. I want to, just like a Flexbox, if you're familiar with uh, uh, web development, I want to align things horizontally. I want to align things vertically. Uh, and so it's pretty easy to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So in here, everything is in the top left-hand corner. It, it, and I'll show you in the, in the debug uh, area. This guy, uh, it actually told itself to center. But you see the... First div is actually filling the whole thing. And the same thing with the second div. So we're gonna to wanna to style things a little better than that. But first off, so let's tell this div to stack the children vertically. Uh, hold on here, wrong one. Okay, so that should just be pretty intuitive what's going on. I want to take my children and align them vertically. And sure enough, it aligned it vertically, but you still might be like, whoa, what's going on with this? So here it's doing it properly. So it's taking this guy first, and then that guy, and then that guy. The default for any div is to fill anything within its parent. If you have a vertical or a horizontal uh, alignment, it'll say, all right, based on how many fills I have, I'm going to cut that screen up appropriately. So maybe that's not what you want. Maybe you want them to go ex uh, right next to each other. So on the DSS here, I'm going to set my height to be of type wrap. So it'll wrap around its own text. So. And we'll do the same thing for, for the other guy. And so now it's, it's much more in line. And when I click on it, it says, oh, okay, you want to rack your height. But the width is still filling. And that's fine. That may be what you want, may not. Uh, but uh, for this part, I'm going to actually uh, um, make the width wrap as well. Let's do the same thing over here. Okay, let's open up that. And now it's very explicit on where it's located. So, so, so far I'm, I'm hoping that the DSS feels natural. You don't have to define everything in the DSS. You just define, need to define what you want. And uh, you can get some very immersive content in, in doing that. So, um, so far, so good? Yeah, so, um, but so far the DSS, to me, it looks all like CSS. Um, it's, what's the advantage? Uh, the, so CSS uh, has a whole bunch of conflicting styles, and that's one of the bane of most developers' existence, is that uh, oftentimes centering something is just a nightmare, and it's not as easy as just saying, hey, I want to center. So this is supposed to clarify and simplify the uh, styling instructions. Uh, at the same time, there are other things that CSS does that drives me nuts. 
uh, cross-browser information, for example. Let's say you, you, you do something on Google Chrome and it works perfectly. Then you go to Microsoft Edge and it's not aligning correctly. And it's just uh, frustrating as all get out. And so this is just your definition is the definition is the definition. It makes it much more cross-browser friendly. Does that answer your question? Yep. Okay. And Kobe, were you about to say something? Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, it, it kind of is taking also a lot of the assumptions out of HTML that they usually have, um, such as if you were to do that same bit of code in HTML, uh, putting you know, essentially two divs inside of a parent div, they would automatically stack on top of each other, you know, go by side by side. Uh, here, you had to explicitly state it to do that, otherwise they weren't actually on top of each other, which is an assumption HTML makes that you want it to do. So this is just removing any preconceived assumptions that the machine makes completely, right? So yes. it's just full control over it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I really do have a philosophy of building up uh, functionality. Uh, CSS and HTML like to make a whole bunch of assumptions up top and flow it down. And it, you're constantly fighting this, what's assumed, what's not assumed, what was implicitly inherited from something else. And it's just a nightmare. So um, it, that's, that's part of the whole reason. I get so frustrated with CSS. The, you know, I just like, there's a better way. We can do this better. So it, it's, it's intentionally like CSS, but at the same time, it's more explicit and more flexible. So, okay, great. Um, okay, so, so far I've been doing inline styles. And in React, you can do inline styles, except it does it a different way. It has a whole style um, property, and you set that a certain way. And then CSS is different. You set the class names. And so you have multiple ways to style, and they're actually conflicting. Style, you know, if you set the style property, it will always override the class. Uh, but I, I really wanted to get away from that. I want it to be like whether you're doing inline styles or whether you're doing it from a style sheet. It doesn't matter. It is literally the same type of object. So I'm going to migrate these styles. Uh, instead of rewriting your inline styles like this, I'm going to migrate. Thanks, Zoom. I'm going to, I'm going to migrate up, it up to the style sheet. So I'm going to take this out of here. And then I'm going to, in my site.ts file, Uh, landing page text. Okay, and so this is, uh, I think I need another one. So this is a central place that you can hold it that's like a style sheet. And it's the same thing as you would uh, might want to do with CSS, let's just have separate sheets. And so now in the application, I can do the landing page text from there. And that is a little more condensed uh, div statement so that you can kind of separate concerns, if you will. So let's take a look at, make sure it still looks okay. Okay, so it still looks okay. So let's say I want to change my style. Let's go to site.css. And um, in here, let's say I want to do the font color is going to be uh, blue. And now it's blue. Yeah. So so it's uh, uh, very similar to CSS, but um, and that's intentional. But I think it's more, more um, flexible. So at the same time, uh, theming in CSS is not so easy. So it's not really built for theming. So I also wanted something that really helped you theme and not just on the, when you compile it, but at runtime, if you want to switch themes at runtime, no problem. So let's go ahead and do a sample of that. So let's say I have a theme definition. So this is just a theming folder and I just have some preset files that we can play with here. So I can say on any given theme, I want to have certain properties. So let's uh, uh, put, body, font size, for, it doesn't matter what you call it. 
You can hold anything you want. It's a number, or if you want to hold the full DSS, or uh, if you want to hold a, a color, that's fine. So let's say, so now this is complaining. It says, hey, I have a body font DSS. You need to put something in there. Okay, sure enough. So on this one, I'm going to say, eh, normal font size is 16. And then client A kind of likes theirs bigger, 20. And then client B really likes theirs bigger, 30. Okay. So all these fonts, uh, font sizes, are now defined in a theme. And now we can use the theme inside of uh, our style sheet. And so uh, in this case, let's go ahead and create a, a function. Let's call it two. And this guy is just gonna use the theme as part of its, its um, uh, definition. So if we want to use our landing text as our default, but also merge it with uh, this here, const. Just a second. Font. I'm not sure why it's not recognizing it. Oh. There we are. Okay, uh, get it soon enough. All right, the reason I did it as a separate const up here is because uh, the merge will do it on any two objects, and once you're inside of here, the IntelliSense goes away. So I was like, okay, I'll create a, a uh, specific DSS, and then I can merge the two. Okay, so on the landing page, we're gonna import this guy. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, and so now, if you notice, we can use functions, not just constants. So in CSS, functions really aren't a, a reasonable possibility, but here it is, and now it's hooked up to a theme. So let me save all. And so we have our initial, but let's change the theme. So on the index, I initialized the theme. So let's change the theme to client A. So it's a little bigger. And then theme client B. Bigger still. Okay, makes sense. So now theming is a integral part of the application. It's not a go find some NPM package that'll help you theme. It's, it's really as simple as creating another uh, TypeScript object interface and just using that as your theme. So, um, so it's also not a compile time. So let's say we want to change themes on the fly. So I'm going to go to uh, landing page. And I'm going to actually put a, a click handler on here or mouse down handler. Okay. So this is an example of being able to use a function. Set theme. So a new theme. And so let's say I wanted this, when I click this one, it would be theme A. And then when I click the other one, I want theme B. Like that. 
not bring it in. Come in. Okay, there you go. All right, so, so far so good. This is just gonna react to my mouse click. Let me save everything. So when I click, click one, it'll go to one theme, click the other. So it's on the fly. And there's nothing uh, stopping you on the theme from doing colors or uh, GPA. or even if you want some function to be able to be a little more uh, uh, reactive. So some func. Something like that. So as long as it fits on an interface, you can use it and you'd have to fill out everything on the other themes. But you can change colors, whether it's background colors or, or images. Let's say you want a different logo based on the client or you want just a completely different style. The theme will help you immediately change based on what they want to see. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's about it for what I wanted to demo. We have, I think, just a couple minutes left. And we might be cut off here. Does anybody have any quick questions? I'm going to take these off to get rid of the compilers. No, oh, that was great. Thanks. All right. All right. So I, I think that's uh, the conclusion of the um, intro. I got a lot of work to still do. Uh, and I, 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 I'm working hard to, to make this much more immersive and much easier to understand. Uh, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick demo of where I'm currently at and where I'm currently going. So, all right. Uh, I appreciate you guys uh, uh, coming to my demonstration. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you.